hope you're well. Hope you're all settled into the new year now. Um, yeah, just doing a small video really, just to sort of uh, a bit of a catch up really, to let you know what I've been up to over the last couple of months um, and what I'm going to be up to over the next few months. Um, yeah, so as you know, I was doing the Ringers winter pairs over at Boddington's. Um, that continued into the new year, so January and February. Um, I believe there was four four more um, in the new year <coughs> to fish before the end of it. Um, fortunately, my partner couldn't fish one of them, um, and I paired up with another chap um, who done really well, and unfortunately I didn't. I didn't get a pull, didn't get a bite, so I uh, didn't come anywhere in that one. So apologies to Paul Cook, um, or Corky, as he's now known. Um, and then in the one where my partner couldn't make, sorry, uh, in the one where I couldn't make it, I believe my partner, uh, once again, I think they struggled and, and didn't really come anywhere. So um, there was two more left, uh, which we both managed to fish, and um, which... Um, yeah, we we done we done okay, we done okay to be fair. Um, the first one, um, I drew the sailing club, uh, which is kind of where I I wanted to wanted to go, um, but I drew a peg I'd not fished before, which was peg one, I believe it was. Um, so it was the end I, I kind of wanted to go to. It's very difficult. It's very tight. You're you're very close to to peg two as well. Um, and there was a few fish there to be caught, to be fair, and I ended up coming third in the section. Um, probably should have come second. I lost a fish very close to the net, and that would have got me second. But in fairness, a lot of people lose fish. So, um, and uh, yeah, I came third in the section, and I think Mark came fourth in his section. So, uh, I think with our seven points, unfortunately, we we didn't come anywhere. Um, but yeah, quite close. Then on the last match, um, which was last weekend, um, once again, I, I, I said before the draw, I wanted to draw um, peg B in the sailing club. Never fished it before. It's a really nice wide open peg. You've got a bit of room and uh, I really fancied it. And um, put my hand in a bucket and I drew peg B at the sailing club. Uh, so I was really pleased with that. My partner drew peg 60. Uh, which was quite good, so I, th I thought that was at the right end of where he needed to be. Unfortunately, there was a few more pegs below him, I think down to 54, um, and they really had a good day. I think one guy had 24, 25 carp for 200 and something odd pounds. Unfortunately, I don't think his partner done very well, um, so they didn't come anywhere in, in the actual um, the competition. But... Um, yeah, so anyway, I, um, like I say, I, I got B and I had Phil Ringer on, on, on A, which was the end peg. And there was definitely a few fish there to be had. We could, I could see them topping. Um, so we knew there was fish there. Um, to be fair, it was a bit slow for me. I think Phil had got four in his net. Real big hippos. This is Phil Ringer. Um, and I think he got four fish for over 60 pounds. They were huge. Um, so I knew I had my work cut out, and uh, I think I'd only got one, which was only probably about, um, I don't know, eight, nine pound. Um, I then, so that was on my long line, um, and then I saw a fish top um, at about 38, 40 metres uh, in between me and Phil. And I thought, hmm, okay, well, why not? Let's feed that short line. Hadn't done it for a while. Fed the short line, left it till the last sort of hour and a half, two hours to go. Um, and then decided to drop on it. Well, literally within a, a minute and 40 seconds on my stopwatch, the rod just literally bent in half. I was very lucky because I was actually up by me, behind me box, sorting my other rod out that I'd just finished fishing with. And I just saw my rod go flying, come out of the butt rest and started sliding towards the water on, on my main rest. And I just managed to grab it in time. So yeah, it's quite lucky. Um, yeah, and I had, I think in four casts, I had three fish. Um, so I had caught one on another one on my long line before I moved over. So I was on five fish. I caught five carp in the end uh, to finish second in the section. There was no way I was going to beat Phil because I think he caught six or seven carp in the end. I know he lost one. Um, but uh, yeah, I think his six carp went to something like 79 and a half pounds, nearly 80 pounds. So they were real big fish. So well done to Phil. Um, 
My partner done exceptionally well. He was in a quite a hard section actually because there was a lot of fish coming out, and he actually managed to um, yeah to get eight carp in the end uh, and finish third in his section, which was really good because that was a tough section. So well done, Mark. So that gave us five points. So I come second, he come third. And uh, those five points got a second on the day. So we had another pickup at Boddington's on the last one. We just, we just missed out on winning it, uh, which would have been really nice. Would have been the icing on the cake. But, um, but there we go. Um, unfortunately, <coughs> I was unable to film the last couple of matches I had there. The weather just wasn't conducive for filming. As you know, we've had a couple of storms. I think it was Carr and Dennis. Um, and uh, yeah, it just, it was, uh, the weather was horrendous. The wind, uh, you know, it was like we were fishing in the ocean. Uh, and obviously with the driving rain, it, it just wouldn't have been good viewing. So I didn't film. I would have liked to. Um, hence one of the reasons why there's not been any videos going up of matches, unfortunately, just purely because of the weather and, and the conditions. But um, what I did do was just, I think it was New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Eve, there's a chap called uh, Pete Caton. He does the Tuesday matches um over at Bollington's. It just opens and um yeah you just message him and, and if he's got room he'll, he'll he'll fit you in. And on New Year's Eve obviously I was off of work during that period so I thought well I'll I'll, I'll go and have a fish. So I managed to uh, video some of that and um so what I'll do is I'll I'll show you a bit of that now so you can see what happened on New Year's Eve. Well good morning guys um I've managed to get on to a match on a Tuesday match. Pete Pete Caton uh holds Tuesday matches down at Boddington's and um, yeah, I just ma messaged him and he had a couple of cancellations, so he managed to fit me in. So uh, thanks, Pete, really appreciate it. So back to Boddington's again. Um, it's the 31st, so it's still not the new year. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's, a, I think there's about 20, 22 of us fishing. So um, yeah, we're all fishing, I think, sort of, sort of peg 50 up to 96, I think it is, and it's sort of like every other peg. So um, yeah, I'll uh, hopefully have a, have a few more pulls than I did on Sunday. So anyway, um, I shall uh, see you at the draw. <laughs> Yeah, there was, yeah, there was <laughs> punishment. Take two, you can only fish one peg at once, unless you're a bad caster, like... Uh, I like that one. There you go. I'll let you know what it is. Oh, <laughs> right, let's see what it is. Here we go. Like a 60, 67. Not a particularly good area, but we never know. We'll get up there and I'll see you once I'm in the swim. Right, guys, well, I'm at my peg. I've got peg 67. Funnily enough, I've actually I've fished here with my dad. Um, we had a, I had a couple of practice sessions up here before I started doing the um, the ringers pairs matches. And um, yeah, the second time I come up here, I fished off a 67, and my dad fished off a 69, and we had a few fish actually. So um, yeah, can produce fish here. Um, don't know where they're going to be. I don't think many was caught here on Sunday. Um, but um, yeah, we just don't know. They, 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 they've shoulded up now. We're aware of that. It all depends where the shoulder is sat. And it was quite evident on Sunday that wherever it is, <coughs> they don't move. They just stay there. So um, you know, people on like the next peg down kind of thing, where the shoal wasn't, they weren't even able, to, you know, pip off one fish. So <coughs> it's going to be a bit tough this time of year. Um, it's a little bit of mist in the air, so I do apologise if it looks a little bit a uh, bit rainy on the lens. Um, yeah, it's very dull and overcast. I don't know if you can sort of, you know, see. But um, yeah, it's nearly nearly half nine now. We're going to start at half nine. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, this is, uh, yeah, so there you go, peg 67. And this is me for today. So, and that's kind of what I'm looking at. I do apologise about the wind as well. As you can see, the wind is sort of almost in our face, which, you know, might be a good thing, actually. So I do apologise if that's affecting sound quality. But, uh, yeah, big expanse of water again. So, and um, my approach today is going to be slightly different to what I've done in the past. I'm not going to worry about... Um, a short line not even going to bother with it uh, today i think it's evident now that you know when you've got quite a few guys fishing the fish just push out straight away um and uh you know it might be a wrong decision uh we'll we'll, we'll see but the last couple of times i've fished the short line not had a touch on them so i'm just going to fish the one line i'm going to start off at 70 meters and then just work my way out to 100 meters uh, throughout the day and just see if i can find some fish 
there's nothing stopping me dropping that one a bit short but I'm not going to feed a short line so I'm just going to literally just, just fish that one line going to start on bread um, and then you know uh, see how we get on with that first uh, sort of cut of casts and um, then I shall start you know changing about with different wafters and, and, um, and bottom baits so that's it that's my approach today I'll see how we get on hopefully we'll have a few fish for you to see I shall come back to you once I start fishing well we're an hour and a half in it's just gone 11 o'clock because we started at half nine today and uh, yeah it's been a bit quiet to be honest with you I've not had a touch um, I've got Wally you can see just there got Wally to me right he's on 69 which is normally quite a good peg he hasn't had a touch yet there's actually a chap to his right I think his name's Tom um, he's had a couple actually so there are a few fish around um, and then I've got Johnny to my left um, so yeah he's not uh, he's not had a touch yet in fact all the way down there no one's had any until you get down to Adam Wakely in Waco he's had a couple um, and I think uh, I don't know if he's right on the end but um, I know Rooney's on the end and uh, I don't think he's had anything yet but uh, yeah that's where the fish were on Sunday down there so uh, they both a couple of draw bags <laughs> but uh, yeah so they're in the epicenter so they should have a few I think um, over in the 80s there's someone that's had a couple by the looks of it um, but uh, yeah there's there's no one really sort of um, sat on a load and, and doing well but, um, but yeah certainly in the, the 60s uh, and high high 50s um, yeah there's just been nothing so it's been very quiet but like I say, I'm not sure what um, what way goes on but yeah or, or, or Rooney um, but they're, I think they're right down, at, well I know they're right down the far end, so room is on the end peg. So, but uh, yeah, that should be the epicenter, I'll be surprised if it doesn't come from there. I think we've got 94 as the end peg going up to our right. Um, a lot of people are saying that that's potentially going to be, you know, the, the best peg and the hardest one to, to beat today. But um, the fish ain't up there, I mean it ain't going to go round, so, but... Um, yeah, a little bit quiet. Like I said, today I've, I'm, I've, I've sort of like really want to fish the bread, um, just, just, just to try and sort of see how the match pans out for me. Normally I sort of chop and change a bit, but obviously if it's really, you know, not happening, then I will go out on a wafter. Um, but at the minute, yeah, I'm just concentrating on bread, different, different, you know, presenting it in different ways. Um, you know, not, not putting so much on, putting it quite a lot on. Um, you know, obviously squeezing it tight or, or leaving it a bit looser, fluffy, and uh, yeah, popping it up. Uh, lots of different things you can do, the different size of the, of, 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 the, of the bread that you punch out. So yeah, just just trying different things with that really, just to see if um, that you know I can find a, a kind of like a presentation that they like. But um, at the minute I haven't, so I'm on my third cast now. But um, yeah, still plenty of time for it to go around. Hopefully it will. All right, I shall come back to you soon. Uh, two and a half hours in now. I still haven't had a touch. Um, not a great deal to change really, to be honest with you. All the way down to my left. Haven't seen a fish come out for quite a while. Adam Wakelin, not say he's had two, but um, I haven't seen him, him or anyone else to my left have a fish since then. To my right, um, not uh, not Wally next to me, but a guy next to him, Tom. He's had three now, so um, he's not having a bad day. Um, oh, someone's trying to ring me. That's Nathan Goodrum. I think he might have been landing a fish himself. I was about to say, I've seen a. Um, a landing the handle go up further down now. I think he's on peg 92, so I'll give him a call back in a minute and um, find out uh, how he's got on. But yeah, you know, I haven't seen a great deal come out anywhere really, to be honest with you. I say in the first hour, hour and a half, there was a few fish caught, but since then I haven't seen anything. So unless Nathan's just had one, which that might be the case, but I'll give him a bell now and find out. So yeah I've, um, I'm now out at 82 meters already gone out that far um, just you know just been creeping out and creeping out and um, yeah I'll just continue to go out a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more up to probably I don't know if you can tell it's bloody freezing cold today um, and there's a wind right in our face so that's making it a little bit more difficult to cast so but um, anyway I'll come back to you a bit later hopefully with a fish on well just over an hour and a half to go nothing to report nothing's changed uh, still haven't had a pull. Um, I think the temperature's dropped. As you can see, I've got my coat on now. It's not often I fish in my coat on. But, um, but yeah, better put it on because it's blooming freezing. It really is. But, um, 
Yeah, no, I still know one along this this bank here to my left. It's had a fish apart from Adam Adam White. Or actually, um, Pete's had one. The chap that runs a match, he's had a small one. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's had one, and, and Adam Adam White Clues had two. And that's it. No, but I haven't seen a fish caught for absolutely ages. Wally to my right still hasn't had one. The chap to his left, I think, still on three, and he's lost one. Um, and then I think it's sort of bitty in the 80s, but there's, a, there's been a few fish caught. And like I say, uh, my friend Nathan, he um, he was phoning me last time I was doing an update, and he's actually caught two, or well, he had then anyway. He, he might have had more than that now. He's on peg 92. And I think the guy on 94 had had one. So, and I think there's someone in the 80s. He was telling me that's had three. Someone else has had two, and there's been a couple of ones caught. So there's been a few fish caught, but no one's sort of sat on a low. Uh, but um, yeah, very tough, very tough day. And uh, with that wind right in our faces, it's cold as well. So I'm out at 90 metres now, and that is that's as far as I can chuck in this wind. So um, but, um, yeah, it's not really making a lot of difference. There's people, you know, casting beyond that, and they're, they're not getting bites either. So I just don't think the fish are here to be caught. It's still got this misty stuff in the air as you can probably see on the lens but um, anyway I would like to come back to you with a fish on so we'll uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope it goes round the next hour and off we'll see you soon yeah. well I feel I've moaned this one on my hook To, is, uh, sorry, there's an hour to go. And it's gone round. So I'm clipped up at 90 metres, and that's as far as I can chuck it. Uh, with this wind in my face. <coughs> I wouldn't say it's hitting the clip rock hard, but it's hitting the clip good enough. That's the first and only indication I've had all day so far. Well, it's pulling back quite good. I never really know, I can't really tell the fish in here. Sometimes you think they're going to be a decent size and they're not, but um, it's certainly given a good account for itself this one. Get out there and see if we can get another one. It's probably about, I don't know, eight pound that one. So had a huge towel, which is one of the reasons why I think it was uh, pulling quite hard. Right, go out there and get another one.
Well, that's it, guys. I'm on my way home now. Um, yeah, I just had the one fish, as you've seen. Uh, quite lucky to just get that one, to be honest with you. Wally, up to the right of me, didn't have a pull. Thanks for the company, Wally. Enjoyed the banter. Um, and I had Johnny to my left. He didn't have a pull either. So, um, yeah, thanks for the banter as well, Johnny. It was uh, a grim day. In fact, all the way down on the left um, was very slow. Pete managed to winkle one out in the last 15 minutes. So he had two fish, got one earlier on, but they went nine pounds or two of them, only cut the small ones. So um, mine only went just over self, or it was seven pound, I think it was. So yeah, there's another small one. There's a lot of small fish caught today. But right at the end, but one Adam Wakelin managed to get four. So well done, Adam. Uh, one hour section. Uh, 36 pound I think it was um, yeah and then Adam Rooney who was on the the next to his left on the N peg didn't even get a pole you you really fancied that all day long but, um, especially because of the form that there was on Sunday there but a lot of fish were caught round in the um, 80s by the looks of it in the high high 80s uh, apparently they're a little bit sheltered there um, I don't know I didn't walk around there some money going by what people said I think there was um, one chap, he had about eight or nine fish, and he won it with about 80 odd pounds. So well done to him. Um, so yeah, and then I think there was quite a few sort of like fours and threes and twos caught around that area. But um, I don't know how my friend Nathan got on. Um, I've sort of heard through the grapevine that he's had a few, um, as in three, um, for 36 pound, I think something like that. So, but I should give him a call in a minute and find out. So. Anyway, so yeah, uh, thanks to Pete for, for getting me on. I really appreciate it. It was nice to get out again. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's my campaign over for 2019. So it's been an interesting year. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed um, my YouTube channel in the swim. And um, yeah, I launched that obviously. Um, or oh, probably. Yeah, it's not quite a year, about nine months ago now I think it is. So, yes, yeah, so that's been an interesting year. Um, I've, obviously, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of subscribers I've got and the amount of people who view my videos, and I really, really do appreciate it. So thanks ever so much. Obviously, for you guys that haven't subscribed, if you don't want to miss any videos like this, then please hit that subscribe button. Um, and uh, obviously, if you enjoyed the videos, please give it a thumbs up. Anyway, that's it for me for 2019. Roll on 2020. And um, yeah, once again, thanks ever so much for viewing and uh, I wish you all a happy new year and I shall hope to see you in the swim soon. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so what else have I been up to? Well, as you know, since sort of October, November last year, um, I've been in discussions with Peterborough and District Angling Association to try and run a spring pairs feeder league at Ferry Meadows. Um, it went to the committee, and um, and thanks to the PDAA committee members, they've uh, voted to to allow the, the the match to go ahead or the league to go ahead. It's a series of five matches uh, run over uh, the end of April, May, and June. And like I say, it's a spring pairs feeder league, so it's feeder only. We're going to be fishing both lakes, uh, each one one partner on each lake, uh, and it's a, a points league. So really pleased uh, that we've managed to get that off the ground. Really looking forward to doing that. Um, the tickets have gone on sale on uh, on the, the ticket system online. And um, yeah, it's been very successful, which is which is good. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Peg Number One, my bake sponsor, um, because they're actually sponsoring uh, the event, so which is really good. They're going to be providing prizes on each of the matches, and obviously at the end for the three, uh, you know, league winners. So thanks ever so much to Peg Number One. Um, yeah, so I've got that to look forward to. Um, also, what else have I got to look forward to? I've got the um, the Super League teams uh, for uh, Feeder Masters. So I managed to um, get into a team called the Krakows, uh, which is a fantastic name. There's a chap in there called Nathan Gurram. And um, yeah, he's kind of um, renowned for a video <laughs> that's uh, gone on. Uh, Facebook and YouTube for him uh, having a famous crack off. So yeah, it's a really good name for the teams, the crack offs. Um, there's five of us in the team. Obviously, only four can fish, but we've we, when, if we manage to qualify, if we're, we're um, lucky enough to qualify, then uh, it's nice to have extra team members just to sort of cover if anyone's on holiday or sick or whatever can't make it. 
So yeah, we've got um, a qualifier for that, um, as I just mentioned, that's up at Barston. Um, that's at the end of March, so really looking forward to that. I'm gonna be doing some practicing up at Barston. And um, in fact, I have been doing some practicing up at Barston because it, as you all know, it's, it's been a bit of a ne nemesis for me, Barston. I, I really struggle there for whatever reason. I can go there, pleasure fishing, and do really well in, in a match, for whatever reason, I struggle. And um, yeah, I need to get them gremlins, most of it's up here. Um, out the system and just uh, yeah, just just fish confidently for the fish that are out in front of me. So anyway, um, yeah, I've done a bit of practicing up there. I've managed to film a little bit, so um, I'll just show you a little bit of that now. Well, morning, guys. Um, yeah, we're at Boston Lakes today, doing a bit of a practice. Um, yeah, so it's, the weather's not particularly good. Um, just come up here, obviously, because we're we're in the um, qualifier for the Sonia Bates Super League uh, Feeder Masters. So yeah, we thought we'd just get up here and have a bit of a practice. They had the golden rod on here yesterday and it really didn't fish very well at all. Um, I think the winning weight come from peg one, two, four, um, with five carp, that's all. Um, yeah, Westy got that, so well done Westy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the whole lake just fished really poor for whatever reason, it seems to have switched off a little bit, um, probably because of all the rain we've had. Anyway, we've come up here and because of the way the wind's blowing, um, we were, I did really want to fish in the teens and give it a go over there, but um, yeah, the wind's just literally just horrendous over there. So we decided to come over, and funnily enough, one, two, four, one, two, three, one, two, two were all available. So um, I'm up here with my dad um, and with Darren Sparrow, who's in our Feeder Masters team in the Crack Offs. And uh, yeah, we're just going to, like I say, give it a bit of a practice, and it's it, hopefully we'll be sitting where a few fish are so we can try out a few things to see if they work. So um, yeah, I, I don't know how much film I'm going to get done because of the weather. It's it's uh, had a little bit of a break in the rain now, so um, I've only just started, but um, it's meant to rain uh, all morning and be quite windy, but luckily we're out of the wind here and sheltered, so hopefully should be able to film a little bit for you. So uh, I'll come back to you soon. Any indications, Dad? No, not yet. No? No. I think. Oh. Oh, so, it's the start we wanted. Nice F1. Pleased with that. Well, this is me today, set up. I'll say I'm on peg one, two, four. Um, yeah, first cast, tip went round. Um, so, yeah, I'm out there on the second cast now. So, hopefully, it'll keep going round. Bit of luck. So, but, um, yeah, it's a bit of a turn up, a bit of a surprise. So, yeah, as you can see, that's my setup today. Just got my pellets there. Yeah, just a simple approach today, nothing complicated. But, uh, yeah, just sort of just trying a few different things out just to kind of see if it makes a difference or not, ready for the match. So, yeah, camera angle's gonna be a bit different today because I can't get it on my normal side, so apologies for that. But, um, yeah, hopefully I can uh, catch a few more for you. Come back to you in a bit. So a bit of an update, um, yeah Darren's uh, just tried changing up his his, uh, his bait a little bit and um, it appears that it seems to be working, he's, uh, he's getting a skimmer every cast now so he's having to wait between 5 and 8 minutes but his tips going around every cast which is good. Um, yeah I've just had that literally that first, first cast, tip went round since then, I've had nothing so I'm just sort of gradually working my way out. Um, and my dad, he's also had a skimmer now as well. So there seems to be a few few skimmers around anyway. I've seen a few carp jump, but I haven't seen any jump for probably the last, sort of, I don't know, 40 minutes. So yeah, it's gone a little bit quiet. Looked like it was starting to get busy with them out there. And um, now they just seem to have disappeared. So um, anyway, we'll keep going and hopefully we'll have a few more in the net for you. Come back to you soon. Well, I don't know if you can see, but um, 
Yeah, well, it took a little bit of a turn for the worst. It started raining again, the wind really got up again. And uh, it's kind of like turned now. The wind was kind of sort of like behind us a little bit this morning. Um, now it's almost turned and it's coming in towards us uh, from the left to the right. So yeah, um, but um, yeah, the bikes was you know, fairly slow. Um, I've had a car. Um, it might have been an F1, I'm not sure, but it's in a bit big for an F1, so it might be a common. Then I've had a small F1 and then I've just had a skimmer so um, but I've had two casts at 70 metres and they've both produced fish so yeah I'll just keep going on that line and see how we get on and Dad's had one as well good on Dad Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, in relation to feeder masters, obviously um, the tickets for the sort of singles uh, feeder masters went on sale, as we all know, and uh, we all had to go online and fight for them. And um, for whatever reason, when I was going through it, um, I picked the, the two that I really wanted, which was the Ferry Meadows feeder master tickets. Went through the whole system. For whatever reason, unfortunately, it crashed uh, while I was going through the payment system. I had a really pleasant surprise um, a little while ago. I had a look at my bank statement and um, tick tickets had actually taken the money out. So I was kind of hoping with my fingers crossed that maybe I'd actually had acquired a couple of tickets because it hadn't emailed me to say that I'd got them and I just assumed I hadn't got any. Um, with that, I emailed Lee Kerry. As you know, he runs the Feeder Masters. Uh, what a guy. He was fantastic. He responded straight away. He got onto t tickets, had a look at the system, and literally within sort of five, ten minutes, I got an email with my tickets. Um, so thanks, Lee. I was really, really, really impressed how quick that you was you was on it and uh, managed to get it resolved. So, um, yeah, so happy days for me. I've managed to get two Feeder Master tickets for the Ferry Meadows venues, um, which is the two that I really wanted. Um, there's a possibility that I may, if some come online, um, for sale that I may possibly fish other matches, but they're the two ones that I really wanted. So yeah, I've got those to look forward to. So yeah, the only other thing that um, I've been up to, or I'm going to be up to, is, is getting involved in the big one shows with uh, peg number one. 
Uh, peg number one are going to be at both the, the, the big one shows uh, up at Stony Park um, and down at Farnborough. I'm not doing the Stony Park one, I'm going to be doing the Farnborough one. So anyone that wants to come along, I'll be there on the peg number one stand. Um, any information you need to know about any of the baits that I've been using, any other range of baits that they, they produce and sell, by all means, please come up. I'll be really pleased to see you and, and yeah, give you as much information as you need. Um, yeah, I think that's on the 21st and 22nd of March. Just check my calendar. Uh, yeah, 21st and 22nd of March. That's down at Farnborough. It's the International Centre, I believe it's called. So, yeah, it's the big one. So, look forward to seeing you there if you want to come along. Yeah, so uh, that's it for me for now. I'm going to be doing some practising up at Barston, some practising down at Ferry Meadows. Um, weather permitting, I should do some filming of those for you. Uh, maybe add a sort of drop into the odd open match here and there. Um, but really, I'm just trying to gear myself up now for obviously the Super League at Barston and then obviously the spring pairs at Free Meadows. Uh, and wherever I can, I'll film them for you. I'll get them up online so you can obviously have a look. Um, yeah, anyway, so I really look forward to seeing you up at the Big One show at, at Farnborough. Um, my, um, there's another chap called Richard Bond. He's sponsored by uh, Peg Number One as well. He'll be there with me. So yeah, I look forward to seeing Richard down there. Um, yeah, so that's really it for me now. And uh, all I can say is thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, if you do, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Um, and then obviously that way you won't miss any of the up and coming videos. So thanks ever so much for watching again. Really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the swim soon.